Welcome friends to another r slash nuclear revenge video. If you like it when things are a little nuclear sometimes, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our first story of the day is by Jamie Panda Hugs. Grandma gets revenge on neighborhood teenage creep. This is my grandma's story that she loves to tell at family gatherings, and it's always a good laugh. This happened when she was also a teenager, takes place in the 1970s. My grandma used to live in this neighborhood that had a community pool. Her and all the other kids in the neighborhood visited the pool on a daily basis during the summer. There was one boy, I'll call him Creep, who was notorious for his swimming speed and removing girls' bikini tops. Basically, Creep would sneak up on a girl underwater, untie the bikini top, causing the girl to be exposed and swim away before anyone could really catch him, my grandma included. Of course, the lifeguard on duty was notified, and the lifeguard directly spoke to Creep's parents multiple times. But they never did anything about Creep and always brushed it off. I'm assuming the lifeguard couldn't stop Creep from showing up to the pool or something like that since it was a repeated offense. Since nothing was done about Creep, my grandma decided to take her revenge into her own hands. My grandma's nails were, and still are, very strong and healthy. One night, she sat in her bedroom and carefully filed all of her nails to a sharp point. The next day, everyone was at the pool as usual. My grandma was in the water and strolling around. She purposely held her hands above the water so her nails remained hard and dry and awaited. Sure enough, Creep saw a back turn to him and thought this was another target for his creepy prank. He swam up to her underwater, unknowing that my grandmother was watching him from the corner of her eye. And when her bikini top fell down, she lunged after Creep while he was just about to swim away and raked all of her claws down Creep's wet and soft back. Creep screamed as blood began spreading in the water around them. He scrambled to the pool edge and was frantically trying to get out of the water, and according to my grandma, she said it looked like he was attacked by a wild cat, to which my family jokingly says he was. Everyone in the pool had to evacuate for obvious reasons. Either later that day or the next day, Creep's parents stormed to the pool and wail about pressing charges against my grandma. The lifeguard simply responded with a reminder about Creep's behavior and warned that he would also go to the police to be a witness. My great-grandmother was also there and threatened with a lawsuit of sexual harassment against Creep's parents. Needless to say, Creep never returned to the pool after that. My grandma says she feels bad about probably permanently scarring Creep, but that's about it. Do you think that, considering the Creep's actions, that the grandma should feel guilty about what they did? Or do you think the Creep deserved every ounce of what they got? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Our next story is by Gustafsson, a co-worker stolen other people's lunchboxes and almost dies. Post year 2008 subprime crisis. Situation, third world country, the IT sector was very affected after the subprime crisis. I got a job as a developer in a place with horrible rules, treatment of staff, and very ugly workplace in general, and on top of that allowed smoking inside the offices without ventilation. But I had to pay the bills. The pay was so bad that it was normal for many people to do small thefts, like papers, pens, notebooks, etc. But one thing they warned me when I came in was that I should never leave anything to eat in the fridge because someone else was going to eat it. There were a couple of booby traps with soft drinks with laxatives or similar, but as I found out later, someone left a lunchbox with food, seeing that the food was poisoned with rat poison. Someone ate that food, and it turns out that already had rat poison. This woman had almost died from internal bleeding and ended up with serious long-term damages in her digestive system, destroyed kidneys, and compromised liver. How did I find out? When the police came and questioned us all in a brutal way. I was cleared, but it was not pleasant. And they never, as far as I know, found the culprit. A month or two later, I found a better job. I didn't pay more but it was better. I mean, yeah, I think that probably just about takes the cake for one of the worst workplaces I've heard of. You know, you hear these lunch thief stories and sometimes you hear them where someone goes and puts dog food in their lunch and the person still goes and eats it. Or they make a cat food tuna sandwich or something. Isn't too often you hear the story about the rat poison. This next story is by X Dankest XX Meme X. Steal my stuff. I'll ruin your life. Okay, so for a little backstory, I've lived in the same small town all my life, I'm 16, and I have a lot of good and bad memories. 
A lot of good stories too, but I'll save those for another day. So you could say that I had or am having a rough childhood, you know, bullied in school, poverty, parents constantly fighting, homeless for a while, got jumped a few times, and even got shot once. But the worst of them all is when my mom passed away from pneumonia in her lungs last year. I was 15. I would do anything to have her back. Me and her were very, very close. So all this stuff that's happened to me happened for a reason. Because I can tell you I'm not no punk, even if I don't win a fight or even get the life beaten out of me, which has happened, I will take it like a man. So everyone that knows me knows I don't take no kind of stuff. I'm also very clever and smart so I can pull some slick stuff sometimes. Okay, so this happened not too long ago, probably 3-4 to four months ago, so I'm pretty chill, so I don't really care who comes over to my house as long as you're chill too. No one has ever stolen anything from me or my house, and everyone was cool with me because I'm a pretty funny, chill, and nice guy. Until one day, this kid came around, we'll call him Mac. So Mac is new in town and doesn't know much, but he moved in the house down the street. And I guess he noticed all the people coming over, or he smelt the weed. So he came knocking, and I answered, and he seemed pretty cool, so I let him in. We chilled, played some Xbox, and smoked for a few hours, until Mac decides he wants to go home. So of course my high self didn't notice anything went missing until my best friend asked if he could hit my vape. I say sure, go grab it. And sure enough, it was freaking gone. And I knew it was Mac because everyone else in the house I've known since elementary or was family and I trusted them with my life. I also have really bad OCD so I know where I put my stuff. But before I start to run down to his house, I check around to see if anything else was missing. Turns out he somehow managed to steal both my vapes, my pack of cigarettes, a lot of my weed, and my phone, which I give him props for because neither did me or my three other friends notice it happened. So I practically flew out the front door. I don't even know if I touched the yard. I think I cleared the witch, but all I know is I ran fast to his house. I only knew where he lived because I saw him moving in while I was riding around on my bike. His house was only a block or two away, but I felt like I teleported there. I banged on his door like a freaking cop, and of course, there was no answer, so I couldn't really do much. I wasn't going to call the cops. What am I supposed to tell them? He stole my weed and cigarettes? No, I'm 16, and I'm not kicking down the door because that's just dumb. So I just walked home and started thinking of a brilliant plan. So it's the next day, and I walked down to his crib and knocked on the door. He answered, and I kid you not, he looked like he was gonna poop himself. But he didn't say anything, and neither did I. I pretended like nothing happened. I asked him if he wanted to come over and chill, and he kinda hesitated, but he took the bait. So my friends and I already had a plan, and we all had our own parts. So first of all, we got him stoned as freak. I ordered an ounce of moon rocks, which cost me a pretty penny, but it was completely worth it. So we chilled again and played more Xbox almost all day, but made sure Mac kept hitting the bong until he could barely stay awake. He actually managed to smoke about 11 or so grams by himself. I only smoked like 3 grams though because I didn't want to be too high for my plan. Mac kept falling asleep for little naps then waking back up to smoke more. So my friends did little small pranks like cut chunks of hair off and draw wieners and stuff on his face. He actually woke up while I was drawing a certain former German symbol on him but he was so stoned he didn't give a freak. So I asked him if he wants a beer. He said yes, so I go into the kitchen, grabbed a Bud Light, opened it, and poured a decent amount of dish soap in it. You'll see why I did this later. I hand him the beer and he just completely ignored the fact that it was already opened and downed it. I did this a few times too. Our next move was to get Mac in public, which was freaking hard. His fat butt didn't want to go anywhere because he was pretty messed up. We weren't though, we just pretended like we were so he didn't suspect anything. It literally took us like 10 to 20 minutes to convince him to come with us to town to show him around. We took him to the local Walmart in town, and we started playing Truth or Dare, which was a part of the plan. We dared him to go in and steal a candy bar. Now remember, he's drunk and high off his butt. He has stuff all over his face and his hair's completely messed up. He looked like a freaking crackhead. Max said yes without even thinking, but what he didn't know was that our buddy was working there at the time and we told him to bust Mac. I kinda wish that the plan worked, but apparently he didn't even make it to the candy. All I heard was that he just passed the freak out and pooped himself, dish soap. He was arrested for all kinds of stuff. 
I even heard he pooped on one of the officers. But I really don't know to be honest, we took the freak off the second he went into Walmart. He tried to stick it to us, but no one believed in Mac. The cops did come over, but we were little angels and didn't know anything. Till this day, I don't know where Mac is. I really don't care, he could still be in jail for all I care. I never got my stuff back, but I really don't care. I actually ended up mowing Mac's parents' yard for some money and bought a new phone and a bad-to-the-bone vape with the money I got from them. Well, if there's anything that I gathered from this story, I learned a new use for dish soap. And to be fair, I assume Mac going into that house and being around them knew kind of what the deal was. Like, they were in there and they were around these people for long enough to know that if you mess with these people, you're probably going to get a pretty harsh revenge. And they messed around and found out. And our final story of the day is by Chocoholic. Don't mess with the F-slur. I'm an athletic gay guy and always have been. I was also born and raised in Texas, so you can imagine some of the goings on in my younger years when being homosexual was less accepted. This was a little over 10 years ago. Freshman year, I'm on the basketball team. I'm not good, not great, just average. The team also takes up a class period, and some days we have to study instead of practice. One of the kids on the team, M, would constantly give me crap for being gay, calling me an F word, a Q word, all of the usual slurs. I, always being a pretty amiable guy and extremely slow to action, accepted his insults with open arms. Although I wasn't the star player among the people who knew me, I made sure my nickname was The F Slur. I'd answer yes to every does butt taste good or do you have a body count? I never let it show, but this constant disrespect towards me and other people, including teachers, really got to me. He would harass my friends, pick on the boys, catcall and make lewd comments to the girls. He was the kind of kid to do a fake yes sir to a teacher who was getting on to him about something. That's when a little birdie told me his dad had died three years ago and his mom was an alcoholic. Despite the fact that I now had this knowledge, I held on to it until I had my chance. M liked to shove people around, but he never did me because I was pretty popular and matched him physically. Like I said, that didn't stop him from picking on people close to me. I started preparing for the fight I knew would come. Working bags, learning footing, all the good stuff. After three months of preparation, I felt ready. He came upon me in the bathroom. Talked some smack, I don't remember. There were a few of his buddies. Perfect. Remember how I said his dad had died? I said, okay, daddy issues. Can I call you that? Is not having one really considered a daddy issue? By the way, why are you so fixated on gay sex? Why do you ask so many questions? Do you want to try it? Or was the last thing your dad teach you was how to suck, you know what? Admittedly, not the best as I type it out, but mean enough. This got him enraged. All the better. He charged at me through the narrow part of the bathroom. My back was to the wall, and he was moving too fast. I got out of the way, and he harmlessly flung himself against the wall. Harmlessly for him and me. Well, not for long. He had to shift his weight. I, to his side, had already done so. It was a one-punch KO to the side of the jaw. This kid had never been in a real fight before. It only took me raising a middle finger at the next three friends he had brought with him to make them reconsider their dedication to the mission at hand. Next, I kicked him in the face while he was down four times. My shoes were smeared with blood. I kicked him in the balls a fair few times after that, spat him to the back of his head, and walked away. I never talked to him again. I never cared how he was doing today. But I'd seen his face, and it certainly wasn't the one he'd been born with. Naturally, word of the fight spread around. I got in some big trouble, suspension. But the motto, don't mess with the F slur, spread around real quick. As far as I know, nobody ever did. Yeah, I mean, all these bullies think they're high and mighty, until somebody who can actually defend themselves is in that position. I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that they thought that because OP was gay, that somehow they'd be weak or inferior or couldn't do well in a fight. I mean, let alone the fact that they brought four people to go up against one OP. Considering everything OP had to go through growing up in Texas, taking all these rude remarks in stride as well as they could, and then dropping that right hook, it must have been just so satisfying to deliver that punch and defend yourself like that. I'm sure that's a lesson that that kid will never forget. 
And honestly, considering all that happened, I'm surprised OP didn't get more punishment, but I think that just makes it all worth it. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.